All right, let's talk about using some clip effects in Pro Tools. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about using clip effects in Pro Tools, and this actually was a request from Patreon. So thank you so much to the Patreon patron that made this request. I am doing this video because of your request. Um, so thank you for putting that in. And if you wanna put in a request for a video, please feel free to check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash noise. And if you hop on there, I think it's as little as a dollar a month. And honestly, there's just less noise there for me to fight through to find things. So if you wanna put in a request and you want me to see it, that's a great way to do it and it helps support the channel, so thank you. So the clip effects feature in Pro Tools, it's actually been out for a good amount of time. I think it's been about eight years that it's been out now. So we have had it out for a while. Nowadays, it's actually down here. You can open and close it right here using this little tab here at the bottom of your edit window. It used to be, I believe it would pop up up at the top here. So if you ever saw that, this type of window up towards the top of Pro Tools, that's probably what you were looking at, just so you know. And the options that are available here within the Clip Effects window, they're based upon the Channel Strip plugin. If you've seen that, it's a plugin that comes with Pro Tools. That plugin itself is based on the Euphonic System 5 console, I, I believe. So um, that's where this comes from. That's kind of the history of it. That's according to Avid. I did look it up to, for this video. And you know, the advantage of using the clip effects section, one of the big advantages that I found is that it's low latency and it doesn't use a lot of processing power. So that's an advantage there. You can also render the audio files out. So I'll show you that in a little bit here. And you know, again, according to Avid, when this first came out and they announced it, you know, they said it's not an audio suite process like your audio suite plugins. It's not a real time process like your inserts. It is its own process and it's on the clip level. So I would just keep that in mind. It's interesting to know that it's its own unique thing. And then the other thing about it that I think about is the fact that it's at the clip level. So when we're talking about something at the clip level versus on our inserts, for example, those are at different locations within the signal flow. So if you're at the clip level, it's gonna be before something that's on the inserts, for example. So you can think about that while you're using it and kind of target the sound at a different point within the signal flow, depending on what you're trying to do. All right, so let's dig into actually using this. So when we're talking about the clip effects window, we can open it or hide it using this tab here at the bottom of our edit window. You can also use the shortcut. So if you hold option or alt, if you're on windows, I believe, and then you hit six, you can either hide or display it, and that works on either the regular keypad or on your numeric keypad. So now I'm hitting the six on my numeric keypad. You can also hit the regular one. So that's one way you can hide or display it. You can also open it up as its own uh, window here. So if I go into the window menu up top here, I can click clip effects and now it's its own free floating window. I don't really like to do it this way so much because it kind of feels like it's getting in the way, but that's another way you can view it. I'm gonna close it here and I'm gonna open it up here on my clip effects uh, tab here. I don't know if they actually call it a tab technically, but here it is. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is we have these sections, right? So we have the input section, the EQ, filters, and then dynamics, and you can turn them on or off. You can also rearrange them. So if I wanna make this filter section, over here after dynamics, or if I wanna do the dynamics first before everything else, I can do that. You can rearrange them, you can turn them on and off. Um, they're fairly versatile in that way. You can also flip the polarity if you want here with the polarity button. And this is basically what is available. It's not unlimited like if you're using plugins in Pro Tools, right? You can bring in an unlimited amount of third-party plugins and use them. It's it's pretty limited in what you can do, but it's kind of like the basics, right? It's the, the, the basic thing that you might want to put onto a clip on the clip level. So it's more limited. It's kind of for a different purpose in that way. You know, if you think about it, it's designed for a different purpose. And the way you use it is let me just click on a fresh clip here. So I'm gonna click on this clip with my grabber tool. So since I'm in the smart tool here, if I hover on the bottom half of my track, it will select with the grabber and it selects the whole clip. And so now it will show me the clip effects for that clip. So if I go back and I click this other one that I was messing with, you'll notice we go back to the setup the setup, I can speak, that we had for this clip, right? So you'll notice that we can adjust things for different clips and it stays with the clip. So I don't have to do anything to keep these effects on these clips. I don't have to tell it, yeah, stay on this clip. Um, I can just click off and you'll see that it goes to the setting for the other one. So let me make it very obvious for these different settings, right? So I have this one where I rearranged things. I have this one where I boosted the highs. I had this one where I cut the mid, low mids. 
Um, and you can see I didn't have to do anything to have it stay there, to have those effects, those clip effects stay on those clips. You just click on the clip you want to work on, you make the changes you want, and you just go from there. So similarly, let's see, let me adjust the ratio here. You can see as I clip click on and off, I'm going to mix up clip and click all the time in this one. You can see that it keeps that setting in place for that that one clip. So it's nice, right? You don't have to do anything to get these effects to stick to the clips, right? You just click and you go. But the other thing to keep in mind is I clicked off these clips. It's still active. These changes that I made are still active. So sometimes it can be kind of hard to know what you have on a clip. It's not like with you know, inserts on a track where you, you can see them displayed here, you know they're there. Um, it's a little bit more hidden. So these are still active even when I'm not actively on the clip, when I don't have it selected, when I don't have it highlighted. But I'm zooming in here just so you can see that on the, the actual clip, it will show you what effects are active, what are, what are in play. So if I adjust my EQ here, it should add the EQ as well. Hmm. There we go. So it adds the EQ as well. And the filter section is considered a part of the EQ. If I turn this off, it'll hide that EQ, right? Because the EQ is no longer active. If I turn off dynamics, it hides that little DYN. So you that's a, one way that you can tell what's on a clip uh, without opening up your clip effects window. But you do have to zoom in to see it a lot of the time. So you know, proceed with caution. Just be aware that although you don't have to do a ton to attach it, it will be there on it and it might not be super obvious. And the other thing that will pop up that I've noticed is the polarity here. So if you have the polarity active, it will show a little icon there for you um, if the polarity is flipped. And you'll notice that these stay there even if I close the clip effects window. So that's how I view them as useful, right? Is in showing you what's active without the clip effects window in play. Okay, so we can go around and we can click on individual clips and make changes however we like, right? Actually, I'll play this for you so you can hear the changes here. So remember this one, um, I don't have much going on here. This is all off. This one, I am boosting those like, uh, what is this, around 2K? Where am I? Where am I? This is the yellow one. Yeah, there we go. So 2.3K is where that is. Um, I'm boosting that, I'm compressing it. This one, same thing, but not compressing same-ish thing, right? And then this one I'm cutting, what is this, 300, almost 400. So let's listen and hear the difference here. So you can hear how it's shifting between these different settings based on which clip is playing back. So one thing that I would recommend is if you're going wild changing things with different clips, make sure you add your crossfades, right? So, or, you know, add a fade or a crossfade. So there's my crossfade that I just made. And we'll hear that now we don't get a pop right there. So it's much better. You're a little less likely to get a speaker pop if you have some kind of fade or crossfade in play there. Oh, I'm in slip mode. I was assuming I was in grid. And I was like holding command to suspend the grid. But all right, so I'll hit play. We can hear how a bigger crossfade makes it more gradual. So I would do that just to avoid speaker pops, even if it's a really, really, really short one, right? If you have a sudden change in audio, um, this is just one of those good practices things in Pro Tools. You usually want either a tiny, tiny fade or a cross fade just to prevent any speaker pops. It can be a sudden shift still, but if you don't want a speaker pop, go ahead and do that fade cross fade. Okay, so I have each of these kind of have their own thing going on. It's not very artistic, but they have their own thing going on. Um, and one thing you can do is you can click on a clip. I'll show you on one to start with. If you right click on the clip, you can go to clip effects and you can either bypass, copy, clear, or render. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually clear all of these. So I'm gonna clear that one and see how it returns it to normal. If I highlight all of these, I can clear all of them. So now as I click through, they should all be cleared. Yep. And one thing that you can do, I showed you putting clip effects on one clip at a time, but you can just highlight a whole bunch of them and put clip effects on all of them at once. So now all of these should have the same boost, right? And the interesting thing is if I, for example, want to adjust this one, let me put a filter on this one. This will be kind of fun. So let me turn on this filter and let me adjust it. And I'll make it kind of like that. So let's hear that. 
Yeah, super filtered. You'll notice that as I make changes to individual ones versus groups of clips, um, it's not an official clip group, but versus a group of clips, that it adds to it. So it's doing both things, right? So if I now take all of these and I take this one and move it, you'll notice that it adjusts that and it adds to this. So it's not replacing, it's not getting rid of my filter, right? It's not replacing what was done on the individual clip. It's adding to it. So that's one thing that you might want to keep in mind is that it's not overriding anything when you um, make a change, right? I hope that makes sense. And then the other thing you can do, right, is if you want to save some processing power, you can render it out. You don't have to render it. I don't, I don't do this. I don't render to, to clips very often. Um, but it's something you can do. And then you can also, one thing that I really like is you can copy and then you can paste. So let me actually, let me go to this one because it's different from the others. And I'm going to go clip effects. I'm going to copy and then I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to go paste clip effects right here. I just right clicked. And now I've pasted that clip effect. So you can get it settled on one clip and then you can be like, okay, I want that on all these clips and just highlight, right? So you can go paste clip effects and now it's on all of them. So you can copy paste, you can clear, you can work on individual clips, you can work on multiple clips at once. There's a lot you can do here. I think that's kind of it. That's kind of everything that I wanted to show you. The other thing to keep in mind is, you know, we saw the bypass option here. Usually I wouldn't use that. I would use the bypass button here if I wanted to kind of A-B test it, right? See how it feels with and without. The other thing is we have clip presets, right? So I actually mentioned this in a previous video. I believe that's why this topic was requested, um, but you can, work with actual clip presets. Um, and basically what you can do, let me go to this one. You can command and then click here and it'll flash a few times. And then you've set that as your preset. So now if I go off this preset and then back on, it's now the thing that I had set before, right? So you can set presets, you can recall presets, and you can actually change. I showed this in my other video, but I'll show it in this one too. But if you go to setup and then preferences, and then you go to editing, and then you go to this, the one through five number keys control, you can make it clip effects presets instead of the zoom presets. So instead of having it affect these, when you click one through five on your keyboard, you can have it affect your clip effects. So now, if I, since I have it on clip effects, if I go one, two, three, <laughs> I click three and four at the same time, four and then five, it'll toggle between those presets for me. So if you're working with clip effects way more than you're working with Zoom presets, like me, that's what I've been doing recently, right? You might want to change that and have it set so that the one through five on your keyboard will affect uh, those clip effect presets. Oh, and the other thing, right, is that you can hide these, right? So you can collapse them down. So they're not, you know, cluttering up your visual space and then you can just work with them one at a time if that's how you prefer to work, right? They're still active, right? Unless you turn them off, but you can change whether or not they're expanded, which is kind of helpful. I usually just leave them expanded because it's not like, you know, it's not like something else needs that space, right? When they're open, it's not like something else will pop up there. So um, at least not <laughs> from my experience that I know of, right? So that's something to keep in mind. There's also a whole menu of presets, right? So I can go female background vocal stack and there's a preset in there. So that's another way you can kind of explore the possibilities here for what you can do. Just go through a bunch of presets and then tweak them to your liking, right? That's a, a good way to go about things. Cool, so that's it. The clip effects in Pro Tools, they're more limited than your inserts, for example, but they're low latency. They don't use a ton of processing power and it's a good way to get the basics down on your clips. I um, I have been meaning to use these more and more, so I'll probably continue to do that. But let me know what you think. Let me know if you thought this was helpful. Let me know in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe. I'd appreciate all that stuff. And I did mention that Patreon earlier. Again, it's patreon.com slash Noise. And my Patreon patrons, there's some additional content on my website for them. We have a Discord server we're all hanging out on. We have a book club on the Discord server. That's been a lot of fun to do. Um, it's small. It's a small group of us, but we've been having a lot of fun reading uh, music and audio and music production themed books, right? So if you want to check out that Patreon, please feel free to check it out. It helps support my channel. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. I think I used to open it up over here too. Yeah, clip effects. So if you select it here, you can, you can hide and display it. But it used to pop up up top, I think. Now it pops up down here. 
Um, but that happened a while ago that I switched it down here. It's been down here for a little while. Um, what's new? I went to Bunny Fest on Sunday and I ran sound for it and it was a lot of fun. And hopefully they raised a bunch of money for the bunny shelter. I also got this sweater at Bunny Fest. It has a bunny on it. It's from this person. They um, they basically, I think they thrift clothes. So I think it's all thrifted and then they make these designs. So they design the actual art and they do the the sewing and everything to put it together. It's pretty cool. I got this other one too where it's, it's a black hoodie and it has... Um, it's the it's like a, a circle of bunnies that look like they're up to some witchy stuff or something. And I th they said it was based on the um, what is it in San maybe Santa Monica. There's a uh, sculpture that's a bunch of bunnies in a circle. I think it was Santa Monica. I might be wrong about where it is, but um, that's what it's based on. It's pretty cool. So I'm pretty pumped about that. And of course, I got some treats and a bed for my bunny so she's she's pretty pumped about that yeah it's a good time I also this weekend I did a little bit of a deep clean in the studio which is always nice to do but I also finally hung up my master's diploma so it's on the wall I don't know you probably can't see it in this shot but um I finally I got it framed professionally you know it looks very fancy now and I put it on the wall and I'm really excited about it so I finally did that it's so like I love these little studio improvements. Like I have a new AC coming so I can have a nicer AC that works better and is quieter. And I'm really excited about that because when it got really hot this past month, like um, I think it was, yeah, beginning of September, it was really, really hot. It got to be like 105, 107 here in San Diego. And my little AC that I have in the corner, it's literally, I got it out of my brother's garage, right? The thing's probably decades old and it was not keeping up. <laughs> it was not keeping up. It's like when it gets over 90 here, that AC just can't keep up very well. And so I was suffering and it's usually fine in the morning and then it gets, um, it gets way too hot as the sun comes and hits the, the, the roof of this studio in the afternoon. It's, um, it's pretty hot. It's just game over. So so I'm really excited for that. I think that's supposed to come either today or tomorrow. So I'll be setting up that new AC. And it has like Wi-Fi and scheduling and stuff. So I can have the AC start running every morning in here before I come in, which will be really nice. And it'll help keep the instruments and everything in good in better shape, hopefully, is, is kind of the idea. So I'm going to do that. I, um, I actually had someone come and give me a quote for putting a mini split on the wall. And they showed up. And they were like, yeah, so you're going to need a dedicated power circuit for this. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I literally just had an electrician run two new dedicated power circuits from the house up here and then like past. So one's for my electric car and then one was for the yard for the outdoor concerts. And I'm like, I literally just had somewhere someone here doing that. And um, if I had known, I would have had them just add a third circuit to it. But um, I didn't. So now we're going to hope that this new AC kind of cuts it and I don't need to get a mini split. That's what I'm hoping. We'll see. <laughs>